Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. My name is Rick Popejoy, and I have the distinct privilege and the wonderful pleasure of serving as your host today. I pray that uh, uh, your day has been a uh, blessed day and uh, that all things are faring well for you and that this week has been a very productive week uh, for you in the gospel of Christ. Uh, let's see here. We do uh, want to uh, make a few announcements. Uh, we do have a different agenda today than we normally do. Today is Open Mic Friday. That means uh, generally that you get to determine the direction of the program, and it generally means that my good friend, Brother Mike Bonner, uh, will be joining us today. The only problem is uh, Mike will not be able to join us uh, today. Um, well, he will not be able to join us live today. I have something unique uh, scheduled for us uh, today. And uh, if I was uh, had a video uh, and uh, audio crew working with me, we would have done it even differently, but I do not. Uh, this is a single man uh, uh, with one tech person, and so uh, uh, we go pretty uh, low tech here. <laughs> and uh, But nonetheless, I do have something unique planned for us uh, today. I do want to continue to remind you that Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine is a study hall. Uh, it is a study hall for the brave, for the spiritual-minded Bible student. What that means is that we make absolutely no apologies for what God said or how he chose to say it. Uh, but I will say this, that if you are uh, listening to us on one of the many different outlets or venues that we have, uh, we want you to uh, uh, feel as if you are a part of the program or the broadcast or the study hall. Uh, there are some individuals that are listening to us via WJHF 106.9 FM in the Florence, Alabama area. I know that oftentimes we have uh, listeners, uh, uh, and I, I forget the radio station there in uh, Bangs, Texas, uh, uh, but uh, I know that we have some uh, uh, listeners uh, via TGRN and uh, through Facebook. Now, if you're listening uh, in the Florence, Alabama area through WJHF 106.9, there, there is no uh, chat window uh, that we are associated with. So uh, you can go to TGRN or Facebook Live and you can join us there and uh, you can make comments or you can give us a call. Send us a text at 405-428-2440. Once again, that is 405-428-2440. Uh, we have several of our uh, Bible students that are joining us uh, at this time, ready and uh, raring to go. Uh, that's always great. I see that Sister Sainer uh, from uh, uh, South Oklahoma, uh, Sister uh, Higgins from uh, South Texas, uh, Miss Mona is uh, here uh, with us as well. She's making sure that I do my job and that I'm on live. And uh, uh, then she's making sure that I uh, uh, take care of things. So uh, I always appreciate that. Uh, Sister Ferris is with us from uh, the state of Alabama. Always good to have you with us. And I know that others uh, will be uh, joining us uh, as well. Well, let's see here. What do we have? Uh, I do have a couple of announcements that we want to uh, uh, get to before we have our uh, prayer. And uh, I will probably have a few more songs as well today. Uh, that depends just on how things flow. Uh, uh, but it's always, uh, I always enjoy singing spiritual songs. Good to have uh, Brother Brown with us. Uh, 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 as well in our study today. Uh, all right, let's see here. Oh, this invitation. Uh, Brother Furness, good to have you from Central Oklahoma as well. Uh, but I do want to make this invitation that if you're ever in the 
uh, uh, Nesbitt, Mississippi area. That's the northwest corner of the state of Mississippi, just south of Memphis, Tennessee. If you're ever in that area, come and join us at the Nesbitt Church of Christ. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Bible study, 10 a.m., 6 p.m. for our opportunities of worship, and we meet every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Always uh, uh, glad to have guests come our way. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, I don't want to forget the Spiritual Sword Lectureship starts this Sunday. Uh, that's the Get Well Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the Spiritual Sword Lectureship, and uh, in fact, I have uh, a little note here. This is the 45th Annual Spiritual Sword Lectureship, and uh, they have done a fine job over the years uh, serving uh, the Lord's Church in uh, this lectureship, as well as their uh, pamphlet that they send out, their quarterly that they send out, um, uh, uh, entitled by the same uh, spiritual sword. Uh, also, uh, I want to mention uh, the, the theme this year is bring them in. Uh, I think this is one of the areas uh, uh, that we certainly uh, need to focus our attention upon. I appreciate uh, uh, Brother Bradley Smith, the, the new preacher at the uh, Get Well Congregation. He's been there maybe about the same time that I have been here. Uh, and uh, so uh, he has done a fine job putting this lectureship together. I love the uh, theme. I love the uh, method that he has chosen on dealing with some of these topics. I think you will be blessed. I also contacted him um, and uh, asked him whether or not this would be broadcast live. The answer to that is no, uh, but they are taping them you can get audios, you can get videos, you can get uh, uh, DVDs, whatever they produce. You can get a hold of the Get Well Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, you can uh, receive that uh, information. Uh, but to my knowledge, uh, as he mentioned to me earlier, that they will not be uh, live broadcasting. And uh, so if you want to... Uh, if you want to uh, uh, listen to these, uh, then you uh, need to contact them for this. Now, they also publish a book, and uh, so they have a book uh, as well uh, published every year from Sane Publishing, uh, but you can contact them there for that information as well. All right, let's see here. Moving on, uh, what do we need to move on to? Uh, I can't think of uh, anything else uh, uh, that we need to move on to. So I have a few songs uh, today, and uh, then we're going to get in. I'll, I'll make the announcement as to our uh, just uh, not new format, but it's a different format today uh, than any other format than we've ever had. And so I hope that you will find it uh, beneficial. So here uh, is. Uh, uh, one of our songs. Jesus paid the price on the cross for you and me. He came to seek and save all the lost. So we are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God. And on the first day of the week, we break the bread and drink the cup. In songs and hymns and spiritual songs, we sing to Him. We are the church, the church of Christ. We are the church of Christ. Amen. Forsaking not the assembling, encouraging one another, all the more we see the day drawing near. Before us stands an open door for the preaching of the word. Let us go into the house of the Lord. 
Upon this rock he built his church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. His words will keep in our hearts and wonder not. We are the church, the church of Christ. We are the church of Christ. Amen. We take the gospel to the world, just like Jesus said. We make disciples of those who believe. They go down in the water, they're buried with Christ, raised to walk in newness of life. And at that moment, sins are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Then we are added by the Lord to his kingdom. We are the church, the church of Christ. We are the church of Christ. Amen. We are the church. The Church of Christ, we are the Church of Christ, amen. We are the Church, the Church of Christ, we are the Church of Christ. Amen. Oh, uh, my friends, that is also one of my favorites. It is a beautiful anthem uh, with regards to uh, the uh, Church of Christ. This is who we are. We should never be ashamed of the fact that we are the Church of Christ. Uh, I feel as if there are some in the body of Christ uh, that uh, fail to appreciate uh, the church of Christ. Uh oh, no audio and video. I don't know, maybe some others need to uh, click in and make sure uh, that we have uh, audio and video. My feed seems to be coming through uh, just fine, but uh, it's always good if two or more are not getting an audio or video feed, then it's on my end. Uh, if it's uh, uh, Sister Ferris, if it's just you, then uh, then it may be uh, something else. But I know that if not, my uh, tech advisor will uh, uh, soon, uh, okay, Sister Saner says still connected here. All right, so let's, uh, uh, let's spend a little time in uh, prayer. And uh, we'll have another song, and then I will uh, introduce uh, uh, our uh, subject matter and our methodology for today. Almighty God and Father in heaven, as we come before thee in uh, this uh, manner of prayer, we do praise thee. We do recognize thee as a magnificent, awesome, and uh, splendid God, one who deserves to have his name hallowed among the halls of men. We pray our heavenly father that all men might be able to recognize this simple and uh, humble truth that thou art the creator of this world, the sustainer of all things, and that one day through thy son, you will judge all men either to be faithful or unfaithful uh, to thy will. And we pray our heavenly father that we might uh, uh, be faithful uh, uh, stewards of thy word, that we might send forth uh, the message, that we might uh, give heed to the great Macedonian call, that we might uh, go forth with thy word throughout this world. We realize our Heavenly Father that every death uh, that is a sad occasion, uh, when that death is outside of Christ, uh, it is a sad occasion indeed when those that are members of the body of Christ, uh, the members of the church of Christ, find themselves outside of Christ. And so whether or not it is uh, uh, restoring uh, 
those that have gone astray or reaching out to those that have uh, never been saved, then uh, we pray our Heavenly Father that we might do our due diligence uh, to reach out. We're mindful, our Heavenly Father, of all of our fellow Bible students uh, who join us uh, each day. Uh, we are uh, mindful of the struggles that they, they have. Uh, we pray that uh, you might strengthen uh, our resolve to be able to meet the challenges and the difficulties that come our way that we might do so with the uh, determination always to be faithful. We're mindful, our Heavenly Father, of thy love that you demonstrated uh, uh, in such a magnificent way in sending thy Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, we pray, our Heavenly Father, that uh, our, our prayers might be heard before thee, that uh, we might be able to uh, listen to thy will, that we might be able to give heed uh, therein, and that we might be able to strengthen and uh, help and to give aid to our fellow man uh, in spiritual matters. We're mindful, our Heavenly Father, also of uh, the fact that one day we shall stand before thee in judgment. We ask our Heavenly Father that you would forgive us of our sins, uh, that, you would, uh, uh, that you would draw us closer to thee, that thy word might always be uh, the forefront of our minds and our hearts. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Sister Ferris, I, I love this song. It is a, uh, it is a, in a sense, I guess you would say a haunting song, yet a, a great plea uh, from the church uh, to hear our prayer. Uh, and specifically, it is designed around the time frame of the Lord's day. And uh, so it is a, such a beautiful, beautiful song in regards to that. Well, let me see if I can explain uh, what I have in mind today. Of course, we always take uh, uh, questions and comments, uh, and uh, the chat rooms are uh, uh, certainly open, and uh, we are uh, ready and prepared to receive those uh, to deal with uh, what we uh, can. Normally, we do like to have those a little bit ahead of time, uh, but uh, we have uh, 
often dealt with things off the cuff, as long as you remember that they are off the cuff. <laughs> Uh, but uh, normally I will have my good friend, Brother Mike Bonner, with me today, and uh, I do not. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I have a list. He sends me, I don't know if, if you're not receiving these, uh, you can go to uh, uh, Mike Bonner's uh, Facebook page, and uh, uh, he puts it up if you'll befriend him. Uh, he puts uh, this up every day on Facebook, but he started out uh, sending out uh, phone messages. Every day, I would get an encouraging word uh, from my good brother, Mike Bonner. Now, I have several individuals that I communicate with on a regular basis, and uh, I generally refer to them as my SEAL Team 6. Now, I would love to tell you, I've got it right here, by the way, I would love to tell you everybody that's on that list, but I have not received their permission to do so, nor did I ask. I don't think they would mind at all if I did. Some of these individuals are great gospel preachers. Some of them are magnificent elders and uh, beautiful deacons and uh uh, all of these are faithful servants of God. They are the reason why I refer to them as my SEAL Team 6 is the fact that uh, uh, a SEAL Team 6 are the individuals that you're going to send in uh, uh, first. They are, they are a special elite team of uh, individuals that you're going to send in to take care of some very difficult job. And uh, that's how the military uses them. I have a couple of books, in fact, that I'm reading about uh, SEAL teams and uh, CCTs and individuals, uh, Army Rangers and individuals such as that. Seems as if each, uh, uh, each branch has a very special elite uh, group of men that are designed to do specialized jobs. And uh, I consider these men uh, not only great friends, but I consider them to be some of the great gospel preachers of our age and, uh, uh, and uh, some of the great Christians of our age. Not all of them are even gospel preachers, uh, but every man on the SEAL Team 6 has a responsibility. He has his job, and uh, so uh, Mike Bonner is one of those individuals that is uh, a part of that. Uh, Jason Rollo, you have met Jason Rollo last week. Uh, Michael Light, uh, I have a quote or two from Michael Light, but what I thought I would do today was seeing that Brother Bonner is not going to be with us. I have some quotes from uh, my good brethren. And uh, my uh, team here, not really my team, I'm just, I pray that I'm a part of uh, that team. And uh, they have some very good Bible quotes and some comments related around that as Brother Bonner, who we will uh, uh, focus our attention upon uh, today. Uh, he's not here, but he doesn't know that actually he is here. And so uh, I want to get right into this, uh, and uh, uh, it doesn't matter the day that he sent this. It doesn't matter. Uh, he just sends out these little texts and uh, these little communiques. And uh, so if we had Mike Bonner here with us today, he would say to us, sometimes we need one another to tell us it'll be okay to hang in there, take a deep breath. Remember when the Lord told Peter, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. We need those words too. Friend, he says, be of good cheer. Even in the midst of trouble and turmoil, hang in there. God bless Matthew 14, 23. By the way, here's another. I, 
I didn't mention everybody on the list, but here's another man that would certainly be on that list. He may be the head of the list, Brother Tony Smith, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, Rendon, Fort Worth, Dallas area, a good, solid man of the gospel uh, for many years, and uh, one that I consider a great servant of God. And uh, uh, I, you're right, This is that was a good team. Uh, Brother Denny Wilson, who normally joins us, would be on that team uh, as well. And uh, uh, there are others that would be on that list. But Mike tells us in this encouraging note, he tells us that, listen, we, we don't need to fear those things that are about us. Uh, we need to uh, be strong. And uh, I'm thinking of Paul's admonition uh, to Timothy in 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter uh, 1 and verse number 7, where he says that uh, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now, that kind of interests me. And I, and so uh, Mike and I generally go back and forth. So uh, uh, that's what we'll do today. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 7, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Uh, Timothy seemed to be a little different than, say, Titus uh, and Silas and uh, uh, Luke and others that Paul traveled with. Uh, Timothy uh, seems to me, as you read through First and Second Timothy, seems to have maybe a disposition that needed the, at the consistent admonitions of Paul. Listen, fight the good fight. You've got this. You can do this. Uh, stay strong. Go to battle. Fight the good fight. Uh, all, the, all of those are admonitions. Hold fast the form of sound words. All of those are admonitions from uh, Paul to Timothy. And uh, uh, Timothy's in a tough uh, situation. Uh, Paul says he's fought with wild beasts at Ephesus. And uh, so certainly Timothy is not in uh, a situation that is uh, a easy situation to find himself in. So he says, I want you to be strong. I want you to understand that if, you, if you're fearful, God didn't give you that fear. You didn't get that from God. By the way, you didn't get that from your mother and your grandmother. You didn't get that from Lois and Eunice, right? You didn't get that from Paul, who was his mentor, his father in the faith. No, you didn't get that. Uh, you didn't get that from the rest of the team. If you've got it, it came uh, uh, from uh, Satan. And uh, so uh, I, I like that. A, from a father to a son, you be strong. Uh, I remember when my youngest son was going off uh, into the Air Force, and uh, uh, the admonition that I gave him uh, uh, is similar to this, to be strong, to remember who he was, uh, uh, never to uh, uh, besmudge the, the, the name that he wore, not just Pope Joy name, uh, that's one thing, uh, but uh, the name of Christ, the name Christian. Uh, when you go off and you go... Uh, uh, under the guise and leadership of uh, worldly men, but nevertheless necessary men indeed uh, for uh, our nation, uh, and uh, appreciate his service. It's been well over uh, uh, 10 years that he's been in service now to our country, and uh, he is uh, stationed uh, uh, in Okinawa at this time, uh, but, uh, you know, I've always, but I told him, I said, don't, don't, don't you ever but smudge that name. You be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That is an admonition uh, that we need. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about he, he's not given us uh, fear. Well, what has he given us? That which takes away our fear, the power of God, right? He has given us power, he says. Uh, but where does that, what is that power? Where does it stem from? He's given us power and energy, right? He's given us power, Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. Uh, I'm not ashamed, Paul says, of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, dunamis, dynamite. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, 
uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, he would say, uh, for their end, here is the power for their end. Uh, wh why is dynamite so powerful, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is the, why is the gospel so powerful? Because therein is revealed the righteousness of God. From faith to faith, as it is written, the, the just shall live by God. Brother Tony says, uh, my mother said, remember who you are and what you are. I love uh, that advice, brother. Uh, that's uh, what we need to remind one another, right? Uh, that's the purpose of our teaching and preaching in the assembly to the saints to edify one another, to help each other to remember who and what we are. And uh, uh, so that power, that dynamite, that energy. By the way, we got a we got an energy drink. Uh, you know, some people need a little energy drink uh, every now and then. Uh, I got my my coffee is my energy drink uh, in relationship to. Uh, uh, my physical, but my spiritual energy drink is the word of God. Uh, notice what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful. It's energetic. That's the word that we're using there. Uh, oh, I like that. Sister Sanders says, and whose we are. Uh, Y'all are on topic today, and uh, that's exactly right. Not only who we are, what we are, but whose we are. Ooh, that'll preach, uh, Brother Smith. Uh, that <laughs> well, I'm, we may have just develop a sermon right here uh, that will be well worth preaching. Uh, so we need, but we need to remember those kind of things. But not only has He given us power, but He has given us love. First John chapter four and verse number seventeen: uh, Perfect love cast out fear. Now, if we might just look at that in the negative, it means then that if I have fear, then uh, guess what? I don't have perfect love. Perfect love casts out fear. Uh, good to have Brother Daniel Hayes with us today. Good to see you. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's Bible, right? I mean, that's why... <laughs> That's Bible. That's what we need. But we have that love. Now, this love is that agape love. Uh, it's not an erotic love, eros, uh, uh, that a husband uh, not a husband and a wife might have for one another. Uh, it's not a, uh, a familiar uh, love in the sense of family love. It's not storge. It's not uh, phileo. It's not that brotherhood of love that we have toward one another that's best built in the trenches of the battle, but it is a love that is a caring commitment, a self-sacrificing caring commitment that has the best interest of the object of its love. That kind of love cast out all fear. See, there is no bars or holding back that kind of love. That kind of love will lead Jesus to uh, the cross. That kind of love prays, uh, if there's any way, uh, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I will endure all of the savagery of the um, uh, scourging and uh, the mocking and the ridicule and the cross. I'll endure that because that's thy will, because it's best, right? It, it is uh, uh, beneficial for us. It was not only just vicious in nature, but it is vicarious in nature in the sense that uh, uh, now it is for us. He didn't suffer for himself. He didn't suffer for his evil. He didn't even suffer because he was righteous. Uh, although the deeds of darkness did not like it, uh, he is suffering for our benefit. It is vicarious in nature, and it is victorious in nature, my friends. Uh, it accomplished everything that God sent him to accomplish. Now, that's true love. That's genuine agape love. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, 
and now notice this, a sound mind. Is that not what we've been talking about for about 45 to 50 lessons now? A sound mind, what the human psyche, we've been talking about uh, restoring the soul of man uh, and uh, uh, putting your mind on Christ to think on these things and uh, to do his will. All of those things uh, 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 is, uh, uh, is the power of what God has blessed us with. Brother Smith, Brother Tony says, uh, when we remember our purpose, fear will never stop us. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, uh, in the face of Goliath, David said, is there not a cause? Uh, 1 Samuel 17, 29. Now he's being, listen, David is being ridiculed uh, by his eldest brother uh, during this particular time as well. And he's being chastised that he has ill motives. How many times have you heard that, uh, uh, Brother Tony, when uh, uh, when uh, you're you're preaching and you're preaching the truth and you've got to, deal with error. You've got to deal with that giant that is in the, in the valley. And uh, uh, so uh, somebody says, well, you're only doing this because, or, or if you would have done it a different way, always attacking either the motive or the methodology. Uh, and by the way, both of those are attacked there. Wait a minute, David, you can't go out here. Try on Saul's armor. No, no, no. I haven't tried it. Uh, it, it's not, uh, it's not been tried in the battle on me. I, I don't, I can't use this. I tell you what I have tried. I, I've got a, I've got a rock and a sling and, uh, I have, uh, taken a bear and a lion down. I have tried it. See they, they, the, the method and the, uh, uh, motive of David was under attack at that particular time. So, uh, Brother Smith, excellent. Is there not a cause today? And by the way, make sure that it's a righteous cause, but is there not a cause for people to stand for the truth? Is that not where the battle lies? Paul is not just dealing with Timothy in regards to uh, uh, the concept of, uh, uh, of uh, Timothy, you're going to have struggles in your life and challenges in your life. No, 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 no. He's dealing with Timothy. Timothy is in the midst of a place where he might war a good warfare, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 18, holding faith and a good conscience, uh, some having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck, 1 Timothy chapter 1, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they might learn not to blaspheme. Earlier he says, in chapter one, in verse number three, I besought thee still to abide at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. You, you go on, you could go throughout this letter, both of these letters, and you will find Timothy's fight. Oh, yes, it's a fight against Goliath. It's a fight against Satan uh, in, in the ultimate sense of all things. But Satan has his minions. And those minions, those apostles, as they are referred to, they appear as apostles. They do the work of Satan. They do it under the deeds of darkness, but they're there, and they must be exposed with the light. You see, but, but in the midst of all of this battle, in the midst of the battle of churches uh, uh, and all of the coronavirus and, and how, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm, it almost... It almost blows my mind when I think about how easily Satan and the world has shut down religion. And specifically, I'm only really concerned about the church. Whether or not the world shuts down Catholicism, Mormonism, Islam, or uh, the Baptist church is not, uh, is not in my wheelhouse. But I will tell you that uh, they have shut down and they have caused the church uh, uh, to engage themselves in sin. And there's a lot that elders and preachers are going to have to give answer to in regards to this pandemic, in regards to all of these things. But we must never lose heart. Uh, I do have a uh, uh, another quote. Wait a minute. Sister Jensen says, uh, 
Oh, okay. Well, listen, Sister Jensen, good to have you with us. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, that uh, uh, you will be able to uh, uh, join us the next time that we meet. I got this from Brother Michael Light earlier. He didn't know he was going to be on the radio today, but uh, 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 I do know Brother Light, and uh, uh, he's not bashful uh, in regards to uh, speaking the truth. And so we're talking about several things, but he says, when God closed the door of the ark, it was a day of salvation. I'm sure Noah could have helped, couldn't have helped, but to have felt some disappointment that he couldn't sway those of his day. But it was a great day of victory nonetheless. Let uh, let's never be prisoners of the moment. God is in control, and the only lives that truly matter are those that follow Christ, Luke 6 and 46. Uh, that is one reason I believe these types of communication, he's talking about our communication, this is my SEAL Team 6 communication. And and that's why I think the, the Facebook live every day, the TGRN live every day, the uh, the radio and uh, things such as, I think these types of communication uh, are important. He says they're valuable. Steel sharpens steel. And uh, the true quality of men is seen when they are exposed to the trials of life. Now, again, that's one of those uh, uh, you're like, yes, absolutely. We need that kind of encouragement. I need steel that sharpens me. Uh, iron sharpens iron, uh, he says in Proverbs 27 and uh, 27. Uh, but I want to throw this back over to uh, Brother Bonner now. I, I spent too much time on this, but I love that. I wanted to start with that quote because I, I just love that quote. But uh, uh, Brother Bonner would tell us in one of his uh, daily uh, encouraging, he says, dying in faith is a great and powerful accomplishment that one could say to God be the glory. Those of old in Hebrews 11 could, could say that. Uh, hopefully, when our day comes, we can confidently say the same. And so he says, get focused, be fruitful, remain faithful, and God bless, and heaven is closer today than it was yesterday. And uh, so in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, you are reminded of that great hall of faith. And he says that uh, uh, chapter 11, verse number 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Uh, think about that strength of faith that these individuals had. Uh, they did not receive the promise. They saw it afar off. Uh, dimly, you might say, as Peter would use in 2 Peter chapter 1. They saw things dimly. We see things a little bit clearer than, say, Enoch or Abel or Noah or Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sarah. These all died in faith not having received the promise. But notice here, they were persuaded of them. Notice the words he used, powerful words. They were persuaded of them. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. I love what he would say a little bit later uh, in regards to this when he says, when he begins to talk about all those others, and he would say, of whom the world is not worthy. Uh, and he says, these all having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God having provided 
some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Now the without us, no doubt, entails uh, the crucifixion of Christ, the blood that was shed there that, that flows not only to us today, but also uh, flows to them as well. No man, not Enoch, not Ab uh, Abel, not uh, Noah, uh, not Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, or Sarah, not David, uh, not Jephthah, uh, not any of the prophets could be saved without us. Uh, that is, without the cross of Christ. Uh, Brother Smith uh, reminds us that we are no longer uh, to we uh, w that we must not live longer than our faith. Oh, I like that. Uh, that is uh, absolutely uh, uh, the power of Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10. We're not to outlive our faith. Uh, we're to be faithful unto. Even if that faith means our death, then we are that kind of faithfulness. Brother Brown mentions uh, Philippians 1 and 21. Now, Brother Brown says, uh, he quotes, uh, for, me to, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Brother Brown, I'm going to add something, and I want everyone to turn with me uh, to Philippians chapter 1. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a word that is uh, left out of your quotation, and uh, I find that most times uh, or often when people quote this verse that they leave out this word. Uh, now, I don't know what uh, translation, but the King James and the King James and the Greek are absolutely uh, conjoined here together in a proper translation. But notice here, it's not for me to live. It's for to me to live. Now you might say, why make a big deal out of the word two there? There's already two twos there, right? No, there's three twos. <laughs> there's three two O's <laughs> there in the text. But now why emphasize that? Because the point of that is Paul is saying, and, and you're right to bring that up, Brother Brown. I appreciate that so much. But think about this. If it is up to me, my resolve for to me to live. That's what he's saying. It is up to him. Whether or not he is faithful, it is up to him. <laughs> for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If it's up to me, listen, uh, when, when, when the government says to me, uh, deny Jesus, and I deny Jesus, that's up to me. I, oh, I can blame it on the government. How quickly we are like Adam to say to God, the woman thou gavest me, or to the woman, we're easy to say, the devil made me do it, right? <laughs> no, 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 we're easy to shift the blame to other people, right? No, Paul is saying, listen, I'm not the origin of Christianity, but whether or not I live Christianity, it is up to me. And so, Brother Brown, that's an excellent point that you bring up, and it's the point of the Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 11. Did you, did you, did you notice? I, I know you've noticed this. I, I don't ask that uh, uh, from that vantage point. I just want to call our attention. Uh, to the fact that every one of these begin with a very simple statement, by faith, by faith, by faith, Abel, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham, by faith, he sojourned with Isaac and Jacob, through faith, Sarah, uh, also, uh, these all died in faith, uh, or by faith, or according to faith, right? And then you have uh, by faith Abraham, and by faith Isaac, and by faith Jacob, and by faith Joseph, and by faith Moses. By the way, Moses is by faith multiple times there. But then you have uh, uh, all of these by faith. By faith, what does that mean? Faith cometh by hearing, right? Hearing by the word of God. I must implement the faith in my life. And so to me, this is a a, 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 a powerful quote. It's the reason why I wanted uh, uh, us to look at this second. Uh, I've got about, I don't know, I got a couple sheets here of these quotes, and we're not going to make it through all of them, but I did want this one uh, 
Uh, good. I, that's a that's not a bad point. Uh, Brother Brown makes mention. I have circled uh, that word in my Bible. Uh, and <laughs> by the way, I have preached that many times, uh, uh, and uh, it does it preaches uh, because uh, it's personal responsibility, right? Personal accountability uh, in in regards to that, and and uh, that becomes important. Uh, and all of this, by the way. Uh, if you'll notice, he says, these all died in faith, not having received the promise. Think about what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1. Beginning in verse number 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively, that is a living, hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our hope did not die in the grave. The hope of every other religion in the world is in the grave. This is a living hope. But now notice what that hope breeds within us. He says, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Oh, it is incorruptible, undefiled, and it fadeth not away. And then he goes on to say it's reserved. And notice this, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Now, this is not a once saved, always saved mentality. That is that, that God just uh, uh, uses his little uh, magic fingers and I can never go... No, no, did, did you notice it's by faith? By the power of God, God gave us the scriptures, the power of God unto salvation through faith. There's that by faith again. So I must be actively involved in this entire process. Oh, wow, my friends, you realize that our time is almost gone. And uh, I haven't gotten to uh, but uh, two or three of this. I have uh, monopolized the time uh, uh, away from Brother Bonner and Brother Light. Uh, but I will say, even though they are not here, uh, their words being present with us, I have certainly enjoyed the time uh, that we have spent together. Now, uh, I want to thank you as well for joining me. I have thoroughly enjoyed the comments, and uh, 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 I hope that maybe one day we can do this again. But I do want to end with at least one song that I think is appropriate to the fact that we have spoken of our brotherhood, SEAL Team 6, our uh, fellowship in uh, the study of God's Word. And uh, it is this song that I shall leave you with. Arm in arm, we labor the sword of God. Take that our lives, swords of Christ. the labor arm in arm. Said, Thank you for your service in his kingdom. Thank you for putting God first. Thank you for sharing his gospel. Thank you for your hunger and thirst. Arm in arm, we labor on. Sword of God, it guides our lives towards the prize. To the labor arm in arm. All said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know.
No labor is not in vain. Arm in arm, we labor on. The sword of God, it guides our lives towards the prize. Lord to be thou faithful unto death. He will give us the crown of life. Hereby we know that we know him. If we keep his blessed command, arm in arm. We labor on the sword of God. It guides our lives towards the prize. It is a life. We labor on arm in arm. You say there's four months till harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They are already white unto harvest. Arm in arm, we labor on the sword of God. It guides our lives towards a prize. Eternal life, labor on, arm in arm. We labor on and on, arm in arm and on. on. All right, my friends. Well, we've come to the end of our program today. I want to thank you for joining me here on Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine.